right now. Let's put our cares of the week behind us and we're going to worship and praise our God. So before we begin, I want to ask us to bow our heads as we pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your goodness towards us. Thank you for taking us through another week, Lord. And as we come now to worship you, may we give you our all. And as we sing praises to you, may the worship go up and like sweet incense, and may your blessings come down to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we'll begin by singing in number 100. Great is thy faithfulness. And I want you to sing like God has been faithful to you. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father.
Amen. Amen. It's always a good thing to praise the Lord. What do you say? Amen. Amen. Our next theme will be theme number 373, Seeking the Lost. Yes, kindly and treat it. Pause it here for a while. Um, uh, we are in a battle, right? Yeah. We are in a battle, not so? And our mission is called to do what? Seek the lost. And so, men, I want to hear you sing your part, and ladies, I want to hear you sing your part. Let me hear it. So, um, when the men, the men are going, um, going to say, going afar, you will keep that part, and the ladies, I want you to sing the rest of it. So we're going to try the chorus again, but just before we go to the last verse. All right? So we're going to try the chorus again. Um, so, men, let me just hear you first. Uh, after two, one, two. Going apart. And then the ladies, when the ladies, when the men, you have your part, when the men is singing their part, I need to hear the ladies. So ladies, I want to hear you. Um, come in. So let's men, let's start it again. After two, two. Going apart upon the mountain, mountain bringing the Uh, thus I would go on mountain on missions of mercy. Two. One, two. Thus I would go on missions of mercy. Yeah. 
you say? Amen. 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 Yeah, we are waiting for our presence on the way and the wisdom on the way. Now, those who don't know, but I want to welcome you. Those who don't know that the wisdom went also to organize uh, to organize this to work in the company. So it's on the way ahead in this way. And we want us to be singing if you have a little song. And uh, maybe if we just can sing uh, just uh, one song. That we will wait and then uh, we are going to sing another song. So if you are so strong songs and we are we thank God for our foresters here. So we we have a song to send them so that you can sing when the president comes the program will run so quick you know so we want to wait it's about to be here just come and get it with me. Thank you so much and welcome we love, we love you so much and thank you for visiting with us and the feel feel uh, feel like you're in the house of the Lord. Thank you. Hymn number two hundred and five the golden morning is fast approaching. Certainly, Jesus is coming soon. on the smartphone? No? You don't have your smartphone on your hand? Because I'm seeing a lot of persons. Um, oh, do you know the song? Is, it, is the song known? No? Okay, sorry about that. Um, can you give me, give us a song that is well known? No, that's not for you. Um, um, Three hundred and fifty nine. Three five nine? Heart the voice of Jesus calling.
Amen. Sharing is the Christian hope while toiling here below. Do you know that song? 440. Is it? Do you all know it? 440. And I hope it is known. Christian journey. It's a wonderful walk, what do you say? Amen. The Christian journey is a walk that we should all take. Jesus. Amen. And 
we'll say amen. amen. All right, um, can I take a favorite from the, from you, another favorite, since? He lives, 250. I serve a risen Savior. 251. I serve a risen Savior, is in the world today. I know that he is living with ever manifestation. I see the truth of mercies, I hear his voice of cheer. And just as I find he lives, he's always... Everybody, ring it now, he lives. Thank you very much for 
very wonderful singing. Now, God, we certainly welcome our Savior in, a, in His holy temple. Let all the herds be what? so grateful to be in your presence but but Lord you in our presence we're so thankful for that on this Sabbath morning now as we worship you as we sing and as we pray and as we uh, speak words of greeting one to another we thank you for your presence for your love for your protection bless all that we say all that we do even the meditations of our hearts Lord may be acceptable in our sight we pray Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. It's so good to fellowship with you. Amen. We have come from Nintendo, and we're so thankful to be in your presence. Can you hear me all okay? Well, let me say it again. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. And we're thankful to be here. Uh, it's, it's very good to have a happy Sabbath. Um, it's a very beautiful Sabbath. And I just want us to take a moment to know and understand that um, God has given us breath in our lives this morning. Some people didn't make it this week. Several people that I know didn't make it this week. And I just want to take the time to say thank you. Happy Sabbath. And God is good. Um, we have a couple of announcements to uh, make. Uh, I'll start off with the one that's probably most favorite to all of us. We will be having a fellowship meal after the service. Amen. 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 <laughs> so come on and join us all. Um, we also, I would like to invite you. Um, we'll provide you with the link. But every Sunday through Friday at 5 o'clock in the morning, um, some members, we get up to pray. We give God the first fruits of our morning and of our week, thanking him for what he's provided for us during the week. Um, so I'd like to invite you to that. Also, too, we have a midweek prayer meeting. That is at Wednesday. It's in your bulletin as well, so you can follow along with me. Um, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And then on the fourth Wednesday of every month, we have men's and women's ministry. Um, and each hosts a separate prayer meeting at 7 o'clock. So we join together when we split apart. So we would like to welcome you and enjoy to have you enjoy that with us. Um, and then Saturday afternoon Bible study, I would definitely encourage you to come to this. It's the first and second Saturdays of each month at 4 p.m. Uh, we're doing Daniel and Revelation, and it is so applicable to right now. So I would definitely encourage you to pick up the phone and get on the line. We also have prayer walks. 
and these prayer walks are very enjoyable every third and fourth Saturday afternoon of the month at 3 p.m. It gives us a chance to digest our meals. So thank you again. I appreciate you allowing me to be up here to welcome you. I hope you do feel welcome. Um, we're happy to be here, and we're happy to be fellowshipping with you in all things. This is Sister Corinne. Corinne, thank you so much. Thank you. God bless. Happy summer. Happy summer. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want you to, to I want to be live. Eh? Thank you. We thank God for all of you. Amen. Those who have come, you know. I look so much brighter now since our president is here. Amen. We have been waiting for him to come, so we are happy. Amen. By the way, he was having another function. You know, I always wonder how our president operates. He really has a lot of work. You know, the South African Conference is a great conference. And now he is just coming from, uh, just coming from NIDE, where he was organizing also Eastwick as a company, NIDE. So that's where he's coming from. Amen. And when he is going to go out and then fly to Georgia, he has a lot of, a lot of activities in the line. But we want to thank God that we need to work so hard because now, even in the last days, there's no time. We are flying. The three angels is flying. So we need to be flying right now. Amen. So I want to welcome those who have come, as my sister has welcomed you. This is our church right here to Bendo. We thank God for her. And we have, uh, before, before I welcome them, some visitors who are with us here, I want to inform you the leadership of Bendo. Uh, elder, our first elder is the Elder Andreas Paul, Dr. Paul. Can you stand and say hi? He's, uh, he's, he was giving you instructions. It's actually Professor Paul. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Yeah, he's the first elder of Pendo. He's a very humble man of God, and we thank God for him and his service. Amen. We have an elder who was the co stay with the wife. And uh, you know, Elder, Elder, Elder Paul is wife, is at the daughter, the one who's welcoming you. So we thank God for what he's doing over the outside there. Elder, Elder Aurel and the wife, can you stand and wave to us? That's also an elder of Pendo. There are two elders, can you stand and say hi? Amen. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, we have. Uh, one elder who's on training, I don't know where he's gone, maybe he's out, Elder Michael. Elder Michael, but the wife is here, Sister Kai, and our treasurer, very able, stand up, Sister Kai, and say hi. <laughs> That's our treasurer, we thank God for you, thank God for your ministry. Yeah, and we, of course, we have our communication, and I'm not going to say everybody, a brother, Brother Marie, can you stand and say hi? Amen. That's our communication Amen. leader. And, uh, and the many other people are there, and also Brother Joseph is also a communication leader, assistant, and we thank God for them. Amen. We, we, really, we are humbled all the time to see that God is doing his work. Amen. You know, it's not us, it is God who's doing his work through us. Amen. And we need to allow God to work through us. Whatever we are doing is not about us, it's all about God. And there's no competition in the area. What we do is for the glory of God, so that we can get out of it. We are so tired of this world. The world is rotten now, so we need to move on. Yeah. And, uh, and to move out of this world is to work for, to, to continue fulfilling the great commission that God has given us. Mm -hmm. So I want also to welcome the visitors. I, I am delighted to have visitors who have come from all the way from Kenya. They were in, uh, around here. And uh, then I invited them. It so happened that the elders, they were my members in Kenya. Amen. They had a wedding here. And I said, you come to where we are going to worship. And this is the kind of you to just say, we will come. But I want, before they stand, I want to welcome Elder, uh, my brother, Yabes Basweti, to stand up because these visitors, they, they came together. Can you stand, Basweti? And together with the visa from Kenya? And the wine stand, please. Yes. Yeah. Brother, Brother Basweti comes from Omoja, Omoja Central State Church. That's where they go with the wife. And also we have Elder Osoro. Elder Osoro, can you stand also? Amen. Thank you so much. Can you wave? Can you wave, please? Yes. Yeah. 
If you, maybe somebody wants to say something, you can say it at the right time, Elder Soro. Can you say, you know what I love, Elder Soro? Wherever we are, when we organize the, the Good News SG Church, he was there, and the uh, Elder Basuet, your first. So can you greet us, Elder Soro, so that we can hear your voice? This is our blessing. And uh, yeah, and uh, and uh, Pastor Elisha Walker and the homeboy. Yeah, homeboy. And it's our blessing to see the glory of the blessing with the gift of life in Amen. God bless you. And you may have, we pray that you can come so many that you can heal this cat and also can Thank you so much. And uh, my fellow from Kenya, maybe one of them can say something. No, you know, when we come to fellowship, it's only not the service, but also, you know, now sometimes we are in a hurry. Why when we come, we come late, but we want to go quickly. But no worry. We, we will move on. Can you say something? Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. My name is Will Sister Maxwell. I come from Kenya. My church is Family Life SJ Church. Amen. Pastor Joseph Nyawoka was my former pastor. Amen. Amen. I think when he came out from college, he started pastoring in our church. Amen. So we welcome him when you come back to Kenya. Welcome to Family Life SJ Church. Whoever comes to Kenya, Family Life SJ Church. Amen. 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 Peter wants to say something about okay, yeah. yeah. Good morning, church. Good morning. My name is Josephine Ojita. Um, I come from Mombasa, Kenya, Kizinko SDA Church. She was my pastor. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, I want also to, to welcome the elder, elder, one of our elders from Good News, elder. Elder Raisha Mugoja is here. Our first elder is not with us, but the elder with the wife, they are there. You can also say something. That's the mother church of Mupendo. And the elder Abakwe is not feeling well. He is sick right now. He called me this morning, and we are praying for him to get well. Elder, can you stand and say hi? Happy Sabbath, church. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I can see some. Uh, from our sister churches, some from many friends who have come to daily support us. And uh, Rodius, you know, my friend from Gethsemane, can you say hi to us? Thank, thank you so much. My brother, the brother to tell, I don't know your name, is actually at Deacon at, uh, at, uh, at the Manly Temple. Can you stand and say hi to us? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Elder Watts, can you stand and say hi to us? The former first elder of uh, Emmanuel Temple. Thank you so much. Elder, the work is really going on here. And we thank God for our sister churches around that they are supporting us. No, we need to support one another. You know, what I discovered in America, we try to, to build a, a cocoon around us, and we don't want to go out and uh, support and do God's work. When we go out, we just go out and do the work of God. As, as I said from the beginning, there's no competition here. They work so much. And uh, we are not uh, like when we start to bend off, or we want to still remember from, if you feel, we want to bend off once people want to work. Those people want to do mission. Those who want to fulfill the great commission. Actually, I was telling the elder here, if somebody comes from other church, we may ask you some questions before you become a member of Upendo. Why? Because we don't want you to come from where you are. Then when you come, you don't really do anything. We want people who want to get involved and do the work of God. Amen. By that, by saying that, we really want to do the service of God. If you feel like you have a zeal to work for God, this is the place where you need to be. At Ubendo, because we'll make you work, we'll 
when you go around house to house, the other day we had a, a prayer walk around the area. And the man, you know, as a pastor, I just uh, empower them. And uh, whatever they are doing, good stuff, I support them so much. So we really thank God for all of you. And, uh, and I could have mentioned so many people. We have uh, maybe a visitor who has come not from a, a modern temple, maybe from the Asian church in uh, at uh, Dira tribe. Tell anybody from there so that they can say something, can say hi to us. Okay, stand up, say hi. Thank you, thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much, thank you. Ah, oh, thank you. That's a, we have an Asian church around in uh, Dira. And this is your church, come always, come always, and support us. We don't discriminate here, we are, we are all, you know, when people ask about Upendo, you may realize that the word Upendo means love. It's the love of God. And you, you can see, not even many people speak Swahili there, but they love it. It's not about the name, it's what's behind the name. You know, some people say, what's his name? This means Upendo means love. And that's the language of heaven. That's where we start practicing. Thank you so much. I, I cannot forget also to introduce uh, uh, my family is here. My wife, Veronica. I used to call her Vero in Kenya. Can you stand and say hi? Amen. Yeah. 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 We are happy to have you here. We love you. Whenever you have time, please come and worship with us. Thank you so much. That's my wife. And I have my two children, uh, that's uh, Jebez, can you stand up? He's taller than me. Yeah. And Obed is also there. Obed, stand up and say hi. Yeah. 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 So, so Obed, Esther is training at later, she spent somewhere else, she's coming. I have another daughter, she's the eldest, she's coming also. Thank you so much, now we will continue with the program, the way it is. Dave, I didn't mention you, but we just feel welcome. We love you, and we are going to enjoy together. Later on, we are going to have a fellowship lunch together as, as a blessing. Actually, we don't do wash here. We just, uh, we, just, uh, we just got this place for today because it's a little bit wider. Uh, so we wash in Mallsville, if you can see the, the brochure, the, the program. The address is there where we wash. We wash in a community center. And we are looking forward to get our own place. So we are raising funds. So if you feel like sending something, maybe the information is there, you can send something to us. We are looking a place to worship where we can have our own sanctuary. Even Good News also is doing the same. When time comes, I'm going to, when the time comes for the president to stand, I am going to introduce a man of God. It's very, I was thinking the wife, the wife, they are very good friends with my wife. We were looking forward to see them, but because Elder has a lot of things, he has to fly. That's why we can, uh, they were not able to come together. But anyway, we, I'm going to bring Elder, I'm going to introduce him when the time comes. For now, let us move on with the program. May God bless you, and we love you, and welcome. <laughs> Stand and uh, bring our servant to a start with him 125. Here on the world with me. 
morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Good morning. Since Sister Ruth is not here, I will be doing a scripture reading. Uh, my name is Malik Webster, for those who don't, who don't know. And our scripture today is coming from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Uh, when you get there, please say amen. Amen. All right, and it reads, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. May the Lord, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Hallowed be thy name, the creator of all things. Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our King of Kings. Thank you for giving us the comfort of your Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And we thank you this morning for being able to be here, being able to be here together, being able to worship on a day when you sanctify us and we hallow you. We are asking that we keep today holy in honor of you, in honor of the rest that we need. Sanctuary system so that we could follow and have something here on earth that reflects heavenly things. And Holy Father, we thank you so much for the presence of everyone here this morning. We thank you for the pastors, Pastor Winston and Pastor Joseph. We thank you for their leadership. We thank you for the earthly shepherds here who speak in your name. And we ask that today. spiritual ears and that we will see with spiritual eyes what message you have for us today. We ask and fall before your feet, asking you to forgive us for whatever sins we may have, for whatever is hidden in the corners of our hearts that we that are unaware of. Bring it to light so that we can clear it, for you are coming soon. Some people's time is all we know, but as we stand here living and breathing with the breath of that today of all days we put down whatever has happened in the past and be born again new. Let us die daily in you. Resurrect us spiritually. Embrace us. Forgive us. Heal us. Sanctify us. Change us. And Holy Father, we ask that we keep your principles written in our hearts and our hands and our heads so we can keep singing to you. 
that you would have us to lean and give you. And for Holy Father, you are the one and only true God, the I am. This world is saying many gods and many things going on. And help us not to be deceived. Many times you have asked us to stand. You said, when you have nothing else to do, stand. Put on the whole armor of God. And whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, loving, pure, of good report, lovely, think on these things. And today we honor you. And we want to think on those things today. And not just for today, but we want to do it for the rest of the week that is an extra special blessing today because you have sanctified today. Let us never forget that. Let us never, never forget that. For time is short. It's almost up. This is the last chapter. This is the last paragraph in the book called Life. And Holy Father, we just thank you. We thank you today for the sick and the shame. We thank you for those that are in ICU right now. We thank you for those in the hospital right now. We love that you have performed your blessing. We thank you for those who couldn't make it today. We thank you for those who did make it today. And we thank you all the prayer requests you have fulfilled and continue to fulfill. And Holy Father, I just thank you again for you told us to rejoice. And you told us to rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. So let us be mindful of the sanctification and the hallowedness of today. And help us to enjoy, enjoy your presence today. And in your blessed, most holy name, we pray. Thank you. Show them. Possessed. 
Yeah, it's a little bright, I know, right? So you really want to use this when you're in the dark, right? So imagine if Zach had this light, and he said, I'm going to go around and see in the dark, but he went around with this box on his head, like this. Do you think Zach would get very far in the dark? No? What would happen? You think he'd run into things? Or what do you think, Hannah? He would run into things. Yeah, and why is that? Because if he would run into things, he might get <laughs> Yeah, so because, so even though he has a light that's supposed to help him see in the dark, is it useful if he has his box on his head? No, right, so he's got to take the box off his head, right? Oops, to be able to see in the dark. Sorry, guys, I know that's bright. All right. Thank you, Zach. So, keep that in mind, okay? We're going to move to the next part of our story. What is this? Salt. The salt. Everybody knows what salt is. What do you use salt for? For food. For food? What specifically for your food? Yeah, why do you want to make it saltier? Because it tastes good. So you're saying it didn't taste too good without the salt? And you want to put salt to make it better? Is that it? Yeah, the flavor. Okay, so he says add salt to add flavor. Let me know. No? 
So, so you thought it had the salt in it, but it really didn't. It was the clear one, right? Go ahead, you try one more, and then we'll have you take a secret. <laughs> All right, well, have you take a seat, my friend. Okay, so the point of this was, so Hannah had some salt, she mixed it in the water, and Razie came and looked, and the cups kind of all looked the same. Couldn't really tell, right? Something that looked different, he thought might have salt in it, he tasted it, there was no salt in it. So I want you guys to think about Jesus. Did Jesus ever say something about salt or about light that we talked about earlier in the Bible? About light? What did Jesus say about light? You should use the light for his love, so God is the light who shines through the world. Amen. Amen. Good job, Hannah. Good job. So to go along with what Hannah said, I have a Bible verse that I want someone to read for me. Can somebody read this Bible verse for me? Maybe one of our older ones? the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a, stand, on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others they, that, they see, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Thank you. So remember when Zach had that light on his head? And he had a box over it, and nobody could see the light, and he couldn't see either. That's not what Jesus wants us to do with our light that we get from our hand. Remember how Hannah would say we get light from Jesus, right? So Jesus gives us that light, and what does he want us to do with it? Let it shine. Let people see it so that people who are in the dark can come to the light too, right? Amen. And then what about salt? Did Jesus ever talk about salt? No. No? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? I need someone else to read a Bible verse for me. How about you in the corner here? Can you read for me? Read that one right there. If you are the salt of the earth, but the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is, it is no longer good for anything, except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. All right, thank you. So this is Jesus talking here. He's talking about salt. Who does he say is the salt of the earth? Oh, who, does he, who is he talking to, though? Is he talking to us? He said, you, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. All of us are the salt of the earth, right? And remember how we were talking about how salt, Razi, remember you said salt gives food flavor, right? So Jesus wants us to bring flavor to other people's lives. He wants us to bring goodness to other people's lives, to help them to enjoy, right? And just as Hannah mixed the salt in the water, and Razi couldn't tell the salt, that was different from the water. That's what Jesus wants for us. He wants us to be mixed together with him. So people can't tell the difference. All they see is Jesus when they look at us. All right. Great. So what did we learn from today? Anyone tell me? What did you learn? We don't know? Anyone else? Hannah? I learned that you should obey God with all your mind and love.
Netflix. Uh, you can go ahead and next slide. Uh, so here in Wendo, we have uh, a few ways to give. Um, you can give to us at uh, via Cash App at dollar sign in Wendo 7. Um, and just put in the notes uh, what uh, your designation is for, you know, what time is offered, and what ministry you specifically want to give to. Um, in addition to that, we can also give uh, via our website, dependochurch.com. And then uh, if you don't like doing an online format, you can mail us, and the address is on the screen. It is Dependo Fellowship SDA Church, P.O. Box 662, Morrisville, North Carolina, 27. Five six zero, um, and then there's also the offering plate being passed around by Brother Zachary. You can put uh, money in there. Uh, today's um, reading for a time and offering uh, is called. Uh, it's a short story. It's called Junior and Stephanie put God first. So uh, Junior and Stephanie decided to put God first despite their fear and uncertainty about the future. What can we learn from their story today that will help us put God first in our own lives? Well, Junior and Stephanie Roberts are owners of catering services in Jamaica. They committed their lives to serving God and were baptized together a month after their wedding. The couple made a tough decision to put God first uh, in their biggest decisions. Selfish, shellfish, and wine were favorites and decided to stop serving seafood and alcohol could present the end of their business. The young miss they would need to stop all business activities on the set. What if clients complained and went to their competitors instead. Would they have the courage to put God first regardless of the, of the consequences? Despite their fear and uncertainty about the future, they put God first in their business. At first, their business struggled. It's almost impossible to survive because most of the clients will want exquisite seafood and alcohol. And the events mostly fall on Friday evenings and Saturdays. That took a cut to their income. With their faith tried several times, they felt the Lord's leading, and today both of them never have been happier and their company is flourishing. Their income became more stable, and they knew what kind of clients to look for. Ellen G. Rudd wrote about this. She said, the world and the churches are breaking God's law, and the warning must be given. If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. With such a curse hanging over the transgressions of the Lord's holy Sabbath, should we not show greater earnestness, greater zeal? Why are we so indifferent, so selfish, so engrossed in temporal interest? Our interests separated from Jesus has a truth become too pointed, too close in its application to our souls. And like the disciples of Christ, who were offended, have we turned away to the decadent illness of the world? We spend money for selfish purposes and gratify our own desires, while our souls are dying without the knowledge of Jesus and the truth. For how long shall this continue? All should have a living faith, a faith which works by love and purifies the soul. Men and women are ready to do anything to indulge self, but how little are they willing to do for Jesus and for their fellow men who are perishing for the want of the truth? Mm. This comes from the Councils on Stewardship, page 51. So, Julia and Stephanie were tempted to put themselves first, but they were faithful in putting God first. Their faith inspires us today. Jesus gave up everything to redeem us, and his love compels us to put his kingdom first in our own lives. so much. Thank you so much, Brother Malik. And all giving is part of worship. 
Madam, Madam, one that belongs to. So it's very, very important for us to express our our gratitude to God by giving. Very, very important. Thank you so much for what you do for us through giving. Now, I want to I want to take this uh, opportunity before the good news and seven day events come to give us one item. I want to take this opportunity to introduce our president. But before I do so, there's some few faces that have come. Uh, very important people have come in, and I want to recognize them. Uh, your brother, Okeo, Dr. Okeo is with us here. He's our friend. Can you stand and say hi? Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. And my very good friend, Elder Mackenzie. When we have functions, he never means he's always supporting us. Elder Mackenzie, can you say hi to us? Amen. Thank you so much, my brother, for coming. And we have uh, we are so much privileged also to have uh, our part, the part of our sister churches in the triangle here. I saw him coming in. I'm very happy to find some humble to see you. Can you stand and uh, greet us? And if you have something to say, you can say, Pastor, welcome. Yeah, that's Pastor Elo Kumamosa. And by the way, we, I don't know whether Brother Austin is here. Uh, we baptized Brother Austin at the Moja uh, Seventh day Adventist Church. Pastor, you don't know when I ask you and then you welcome me at the Moja to the place to baptize, I was very happy. And that's the way we should go, that we need to support one another. Pastor, thank you. And you know, I don't want to say anything besides, but I want to say when you're here, that that was very important. It just it was in my heart. And thank you so much. We 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 are serving together in the area, and we thank you for coming. That's Pastor Umoja from the Seventh Day Adventist Church, uh, Umoja Seventh Day Adventist Church. And uh, I don't know whether I've forgotten anybody, but uh, I recognize those that I didn't recognize. But you forgive me. But we are together, and we thank God that God has put us here to worship this morning. Now, I have this privilege, it's my honor to, and the privilege to introduce to you our speaker, our elder and the president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, that's South Atlantic Conference. It's, uh, it's my honor also to, to let you know his name is Elder William L. Williston. And uh, Elder Winston is a native of, uh, of the city of Mason, Durham, here in North Carolina. Yeah. And they graduated from uh, one of the high school here called Merrick Moore High School, yeah. which is not far from this side of Durham, if you know there. And after that, he earned his bachelor degree in theology, and uh, those are in major, two majors. First, that's in theology and also business administration. From, by that time, it was called Ukur College, but now it's called Ukur University. What do you say? Yeah. And they didn't stop there. He also, also earned his master's degree from Andrews University. Yeah. That's our Seventh-day Adventist University there. And they are in Berrien Springs, where he has also done some of doctor, doctoral courses. If you have a big one to graduate, because he has done those. And Elder Wilson has, uh, uh, he has worked in some, he, he, he has been a, a pastor for Seventh day Adventist Church for a long time. Yeah. Actually, he has served for many years in the church. He has served in many churches in the, here in, uh, in South Carolina, no, in Georgia. He served in Georgia, the Great Georgia, you know. He served seven, seven congregations. And also in South Carolina, seven congregations. And in North Carolina, seven, two congregations. Amen. And then, then God blessed him. Because when you serve God, God can lift you. Because of his excellent leadership, now in, uh, it was erected uh, to be the executive, to serve as the executive secretary of the, of the South Atlantic Conference, and the, where he served until May 2006. Through 2000, and from May 2006 to 2011. Yeah. And thereafter, 
In September 2011, he was elected as our president of the South African government. What do you say? Amen. And then 2016 September, God said, we need to continue with the work we have started, the good work. He worked so hard and uh, he's always flying on the, you know, working so hard and I, I love him so much. And then he was re-erected the second time, uh, 2016 he was re-erected, up to now, he's serving as our president, great president. Yeah, Elder Winston is married, he has been married for, I think Elder by now it's been five years, eh? if I'm not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, by now he has been married for 55 years. His dear wife, I, we love the, our first lady so much. If he was here, you know, he, he sang the first time at Good News when he was, they came to Good News seven days first time. Yeah. He sang a good song there. Yeah. We were looking forward, and they're very close, close friends with my wife. They always text each other. Yeah. They have two daughters. With them, they're blessed with two daughters. And I believe, Elder, they have uh, five grandchildren. Yeah. By then, when I knew, I don't know where they have increased, but I know five grandchildren. And also, by that time, when I, I hear Elder was introduced, I don't know about that, I don't have to ask my president all the time, tell me what, but at that time, he has three great-grandchildren. Now, there are four great-grandchildren. Oh. Uh, that's very a blessing. And uh, he's a man of God, he loves God. Yeah. I really want to thank God when I came to this country. I was uh, trying to do something, working for the Lord, and then he got me, and he said, Pastor Joseph, come and we we'll work together. Amen. So I thank God to be a part of the team of South Atlantic Conference, the Great Conference. Amen. When you are there, you don't feel lonely. And let me say something here, and I want to say this and not for bad. You know, you know the, the, the State Conference, they here to plant churches some areas where they hear and they see there's white people around there, they want to reach out to them. And then, then we African and African Americans we go, we encourage him, and then they disappear, they leave you alone. They've been mad of, of, of us. When we are going to encroach where they want to plant their churches in, their ter in the, those territories. So we go there, instead of just impressing where we are, then when we go there, then we stop their ministry. So what I'm saying, stay where you are. Stay with South Atlantic Conference and those who are with us, because we know. You know, I have made a joke with Pastor Elder from Rosa because uh, one time I was hired uh, for one year with, South, with the Carolina Conference and I was there. When we are past this meeting, I said, I feel so lonely. When I walk around, nobody's coming. But when I'm with South Atlantic Conference, when I go, my brother, pastors, they greet me. Hi, brother, they bless me. I feel so good. I feel home. Not that I hate to be the white people. No, I love them so much. But we have a mission to do. Let them do their mission. Let us do so our mission, you know. So important. I'm not saying that, but don't go there because, you know, some of them, they are very good. And we may have some of them here. But some of them, they just, until the Lord Jesus touches them, he just leave them alone for a while, eh? Jesus is coming very soon. Thank you so much. After the item, uh, the next voice we are going to hear is from our president, Elder Winston. And Elder Winston is going to speak to us. Now, how many of you will join me when time comes to speak to us? But before I forget, we have also our candidates for ordination, candidates for ordination. And uh, you know, the church at the Good News Seventh-day Adventist Church, we love you so much, Brother Charles Adams. Brother Charles Adams used to go to get some money. I told you that when you come to us, you're gonna work. So, and, uh, and uh, now his elder used to be the head deacon over there. But for one reason, he chose to come to us, and he has been with us. He was a man of God, and a Charles Adams, you know, a man who, who witnesses it in his house. We have so many stories that he tells we are witnesses, and the spirit is using him. And now the church good news, uh, last, uh, when we were doing church election, they had just appointed him to be also one of the elders. What do you say? Amen. And today is going to be ordained. I know the spirit has not touched the wife to join, but there's also the son who over there as a choir leader. But we thank you for your support, you have the support. Thank you so much. And we have also another candidate, Brother Cyrus Taki. Also, you know, he's just wedded recently. You know, just, uh, yeah, and there was a wonderful wedding. Eh? And uh, now, also the church, 
So if you need a member, the member of the committee, they appointed you or they reckoned him. If you're some one of the elders, you will be serving their Lord's church. What do you say? Amen. And now when the president comes home, as he will do the program, as he's going to shape the Bukete church as a company, as well as going to, they are going to lay hands, he's going to officiate, you know, the ordaining. You are so blessed, man. You are going to be, uh, you know, you are going to be ordained by the president, yes. our president. Yes. That's yes. a double blessings. We thank yes. God. Yes. So now, uh, good news, please. Can you come on? Then uh, we'll go with the program. <laughs> Sabbath, everyone. Yes. We are happy to be here today to support our brothers and sisters of the Friendo Church. Amen. They are going to be organized as a company. Amen. And we have some elders that are going to be ordained too for the work of God. Amen. Therefore, we have a special song for them. Amen. The title is Called Unto Holiness, Amen. Church of God. Amen. Called Unto Holiness, Children of God. Amen. Happy listening. Amen.
stands to speak to us. Uh, I want, uh, I'm very sorry, those who are online, we have so many people online who are with us. I want to welcome you. Those who are online, I'm sorry that I, I, I was not able to recognize you. Uh, we have so many people online. Elder Mitchell from Mount Zion, I believe you are there. And our Elder Samson Yongoro and the others who are over there, you are welcome as our Elder speaks now, you are welcome to the kingdom. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor, don't, don't leave just yet. I want to show you a picture. And see if you can show me where I'm just pressing forward. Let me get this. Where is that picture? That, that's in the Kajiado. You know, Kajiado is in one of the Masai area. Next to me, I'm next to my road, not far from my road. And let's see if I can go around and tell me when it was taken. Does it have a date on it? Mm -hmm. I think it's April of 2019. Yeah, 2019. 2019, yeah. where I visited the Maasai people um, on a trip to Kenya that I spent a week there. Um, it was actually 
And when I listen to the pastor introduce all of those in the congregation today, thank you. We, we have people from all around the world here today. And I am happy to see my brothers and sisters. Um, I've done Ancestry.com. A couple of years ago, I got I got family in West Africa. Yes. Amen. Hey, Amen. Surprise! surprise. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't be surprised. I have I have family from West Africa, Amen. from the motherland, and, and uh, all of you are here today are my people. I'm happy to see you today. Glad Amen. to be a part of this. I really I really enjoyed the fellowship uh, when we visited there in Kenya couple of years ago. I have several duties today. I have to bring you greetings. I have to organize a church. I have to install some elders. And then I have to bring you a short message. <laughs> so don't look at your watches. <laughs> but but I will move with dispatch. But I am happy to be here. This, this ended up being a double duty and it ended up on a busy weekend. Tomorrow morning I have a an appointment with the Atlanta Berean Church to dedicate and, and elevate us. If you've been to the, the Berean Church in Atlanta, you know up and down is not friendly to those, uh, the senior citizens and those of us who've had a few birthdays. So Berean has added an elevator that's going to be dedicated at 9 o'clock in the morning. We have our conference executive, not executive committee, finance committee, to try to Finish the budget. It's almost 2022, and we haven't voted our budget yet, so we will do that this month. And then my wife and I uh, will join up together and go to Huntsville for the the Help Convention, the ministerial conference that's held every year, the first week of December. So, yeah, and and on this trip, when when I was um, when I made this assignment to be here, I didn't know I would be organizing two companies today. So this morning at 10 o'clock, organized the East Wake Fellowship. Amen. And now we're here today with you. So thank you for your patience. Amen. And I, I won't presume upon this because after I leave here in a little bit, I've got to get on the airplane and go back to Atlanta. Amen. But Sister Veronica, thank you for uh, being the, the, the first lady and the, ho the hostess pastor of this church, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I have told my wife that she should have been with me, so I put this on her and blamed her for her not being here because she knew I was coming up last night and back right after church today, so uh, we, we owe you another visit. Amen. 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 <laughs> this, this is uh, a very important thing. I, I mentioned a little bit ago to East Wake Fellowship. Um, it's been 40 years, 40 years since uh, Prince Charles and Princess Diana got married. Most of you, many of you as I look around, weren't even born then, 40 years ago. But I, I thought of, in my mind, here in the States, we got the wedding in the middle of the night. Uh, but it was so much pomp and circumstance and uh, the, 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 the excitement and the royalty and the money that was spent and the horse-drawn carriages and, and all, it, it was just something to behold. Uh, that, that was a, a marriage, a wedding that didn't last very long. But, but all of the money and all of the pomp and all of the circumstances, all of the, the pageantry that was put into that uh, does not rival what we do here today. This, this seems very simple. Just a brief ceremony and a few words and a prayer uh, to, to, to bring a, a group of believers into the remnant church. Um, we, we could have horses and chariots. We could have trumpets and cymbals. We could have all of that. But what we have is the presence of the Holy Spirit. And, and the, the, the angels of glory taking note, this, this service that we have here today, though very simple, though, though, though not with its, its, its own um, importance in the eyes of heaven. 
What you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. So I am happy today to be here for this opportunity. You, you are part of a worldwide. You've already you've heard that this morning. The pastor, the Waka, introducing people from all around the world who are here in the sanctuary today. But you are a part of a worldwide evangelical Protestant church. We, we, we have 22 million members worldwide, most of whom are on the continent of Africa and in South America. Uh, there are a little over a million of us here in the United States. There are 92,000 churches, Adventist churches around the world. Amen. And, and, and over 72,000 companies around the world. And you are joining that fellowship. We have a division. Uh, we have a world church. We have 13 divisions. We have 63, 65 unions. Uh, there are 2,235 recognized companies uh, around the countries, around the world, and the Seventh-day Adventist Church has an active presence in 212 of those. Wow. 212 of 235. But the Bible says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So what we do here and what's done uh, in in Africa and in South America and in, in Australia and other places around the world helps to ensure that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached. So it, it, is, it is a joy and an honor and a privilege for me, a little old country boy from about 20 miles from here. Uh, my, my mother used to take us out to the airport right here. They had, one, they had one runway back in those days, and there was an observation deck where we could go up on the observation deck and watch the airplanes take off and land. And I never thought as a little boy that I'd be flying in and out of here doing work for the Lord. I mean, that, that was long, long ago. And every time I, I, I fly into this, every time I come into my hometown to do work for the Lord, I'm reminded of as a little boy, just going out there and watching airplanes take off. And they had no jet engines, they had propellers, they went round and round, and it looked like they'd never get off the ground. But but you never know where God is going to take you, what he will have you to do. And to, to have this honor today to, 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 to do two new companies for the Lord and for the church is an honor indeed. We, we are we are privileged to be here, Pastor Nawaka, just to welcome this group. It is, it is an important time. It is a sacred time. It is something that, that is noticed in heaven and certainly noticed around this conference, South Atlantic Conference. So we thank you for being a part of it. Pastor, if you would join me here, I'm going to ask you if you would have the, the, the members charter members of this group to stand and be recognized. Those who are charter members of this church, you need a mic, don't you? Some of them are online, they are not able to come, but those who are here, please come and stand. Right there at the back there, thank you so much. Yeah, some are on, online. All right. Maybe you're online, you, I don't know, you can stand, but anyway. Yeah, yeah Sister Bamba, stand. Yeah. Those, those who are online, just, just wave your hand if you Sister would. Bamba. Yeah. Thank you very much. You, you are the nucleus of a new group of Seventh-day believers in the, the World Church and in particular the South Atlantic Conference. And I would have, first of all, someone, a uh, pastor, to make a motion and a second that we receive these people as charter members of Fendo Adventist Church Fellowship. Uh, I so move that uh, this group be organized as a company. All right, is there support for that? Yes. All right, we have a motion and a second. Anyone want to question that? 
All right, all in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Now, while they are standing, are there others who are here today who have, have not yet registered that you want to be a part of this church who would like to be? Just raise your hand. Let the pastor see your hand. If you want to be a part of this new fellowship, please let us know that by just putting your hand up. All right, Pastor, we're looking around. Yeah. You have that opportunity today. You will have it every day that these church doors open to become a part of this fellowship. All right, thank you very much. You may sit down. Now, Pastor, I need to know who the, the, the leaders are of this church. Elder, clerk treasurer, any other officers if you would have them stand so that this body that we just recognized can vote them in official as their leaders. Yes, and, uh, and uh, Dr. Paul Andres, the first elder, and the other elder, Kia, Brother Lem, the church club, Sister Corinne, and uh, we have uh, we have Brother Marit, uh, the first the communication leader, held on training, Brother Michael, and uh, the, we have the treasurer, Sister Kai, please stand. We have the children's ministry. Everybody has something to do in there. So, so these are the new care, and uh, the, others, uh, the others are online. All right, now I will receive a motion to have these as your leaders of this fellowship. Is there a motion and a second for that? I saw more, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Is there a second? All right. A second. And you, you as members have a right to vote for yourselves. All those in favor of these being the official leaders of this church on record for today, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your willingness to give up your time for the Lord. Thank you very much. May you may be seated. Amen. 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 We, we want to uh, base solely upon the Word of God and the authority in me as president of this conference to welcome this group into the sisterhood of the South Atlantic Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. You are officially part of us. Now, now. We don't want you to stay a company. Amen. We want you to, to grow to a church. We, we have um, plateau, we have levels where we welcome church bodies into, and that simply is this, 35, 35 full members of this church at $35,000 in annual time. And you, you're almost there. So, so I look to come back in the not too distant future to organize you as a church. Amen. 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 Yes. 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 Do it while I'm here, huh? Yeah. But but we we appreciate your willingness to help finish this work. And uh, you you don't know what it, an honor it is for me to be here today to celebrate this with you and with East Wake and to add members and believers to the church of God. Just want to say a prayer of dedication right now if you would bow your heads as we pray Father in the name of Jesus. Uh, we, we, we are not a massive church in and of ourselves but when you add all of the pieces together when you, when you go to other lands on other sides of these great oceans when you meet people from other nationalities and ethnicities, <clears throat> and you add us all together, and you count the number of believers who, who are part of the Adventist Church, the Seventh day Adventist Church around the world, we are many. But we realize that this work we're no match for. So we pray for the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the outpouring of of, of strength and honor and talents and gifts to us that we might finish this work and hear from your lips, well done, good and faithful servants. Amen. 
into God's holy building. Lord, bless this new company today. Keep them safe from harm and danger, from sickness and disease. Uh, keep keep a, a roof over their head and food on their tables. And, and may there be doors open to welcome them to worship, Lord. We know, we know we're not uh, an island to ourselves. There's so many other churches that have opened their doors to Seventh-day Adventist believers. And some, by doing that, have heard of our message and been pointed to Jesus Christ and his third and good message. So, bless all of those who are here today. Keep them safe. Keep them healthy. Keep all of us as we travel up and down dangerous roads and highways and in, in airplanes with people from all around the world. Just protect us from any viruses, any, any, any germs, any, anything that would cause us harm or problem. We pray that you would heal this world, Lord. Please, all of these, these viruses and all these virus and all of the people, countless tens of thousands, yea, hundreds of thousands who have given their lives from the time this virus, these strains started. You're the only one who can fix it, Lord. We get our vaccinations and we believe in the science and the medicine, but you have to heal us. So I pray that you would, dear Lord, and comfort the families who are grieving, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Pastor, we have, uh, I've done two tasks. The third task is we have some elders who need to be uh, set apart, recognized, ordained to the cause of God. Um, if you would introduce who those are, please. Yes, the first one is uh, John Adams. Yeah. Charles Adams. And then the second one is uh, Brother. Silas Tati and the wife that we are there. Amen. So we will take your time, Brother Adams. You can come to the front bench, yes. Thank you. And the wives can sit behind, you know. By the way, they come as they the promise is said to come by next year by God's grace. We, we should come to organize as a church now. So we need to work hard and then we can be there. Giving, we are there, but membership, we are not there. So we need to, to work hard on membership. Thank you. All right. First Timothy talks about those who desire to be uh, bishops and leaders in the church. You know, we as Adventists do not embrace bishop, the term bishop, even though it's biblical. Um, if you desire to be a bishop, and this, 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 in 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 the terms of the Bible, is a bishop, as am I, uh, uh, an archbishop. Amen. But the Bible says, if you desire leadership in the church, you've got to be blameless. You've got to be quote unquote holy. And you've got to be dedicated to the service of the Lord. We, we don't use bishop in our structure. We use elder. We use deacon. Um, you are elected to serve in your church as what the Adventist church refers to as a local elder. That you are uh, subject to the body that voted you. Uh, Pastor Nawaka has been ordained as a minister of the gospel and can serve anywhere around the world. Uh, should you move to another church, elders, you are not required to be ordained again. You're ordained in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, if you, if you serve as an elder and you are voted next year or the year after another church to be a deacon, you need not be ordained again. Your ordination covers any service that you would do in this church. You, you are uh, noticed and recognized by God himself and by the church and by the South Atlantic Conference. Now, let me just throw this in since you asked me. We do not use the term in the Seventh-day Adventist Church reverend. Uh, I'm not a reverend. He's not a reverend. You don't find any reverends or right reverends in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. 
and, and we base that upon uh, the book of Le Leviticus and other texts. There are a number of texts that, that reference reverend, but Leviticus 19.30 specifically says, Ye shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary. In other places, it, it references the Lord in Psalm 111.9. Holy and reverent is his name. It's his name. So we, we do not have reverence. We have bishops. We don't have bishops. We have elders and we have deacons and we have other leaders. So today it is my esteemed privilege to welcome these candidates here today to serve as elders in the Seventh-day Adventist Church with an ordination that would serve wherever they are elected to serve. So I, I, I am challenging you today, my friends. Um, you see how we're so just nice and kind. If you, if you want to get in trouble in the church, be a leader. <laughs> did, I say, did I say that nicely? Um, pe people will not agree with you and they'll let you know it. And uh, pe people will have other ideas and they'll let you know it. And God has called you to, to be wise, to listen carefully, to, to respect people in this church, and to let them know specifically that they are here because God wants them here and you are here to serve them. But you also serve God. So but when I pray, even though I, I don't have a list of all of the elders that go name by name in all of the churches, I pray for the leadership of our churches. Right now, we as a conference, we as a conference have, have nine openings for pastors in our conference. From three of them getting calls to other fields, from uh, four being uh, taken retirement, from, from two who have uh, resigned and chosen an early retirement, uh, we, we, we are at a loss right now for pastors. But you have been called to lead and to hold up the hands of the pastors. And you are an extension of the pastor, and, and they are an extension of, of me and the leadership of the conference. So, so what you do is so vitally important. You are spiritual leaders. Amen. Spiritual leaders. Yeah. And God has called you to do that. Um, pastor can't run around behind and make sure you behave. <laughs> That's not his job. I can't do that. So please know that where you are, wherever you are, that the Holy Spirit is there and uh, will give you, not, not, not just to watch you and not just to, to spy on you, the Holy Spirit is there to give you strength and to leadership to do what God has called you to do. So today it is my privilege and honor, along with the pastor, to, to offer you an ordination to the Lord. Now. I know we are social distancing, and I know we have our masks. Um, that there are there are other pastors here today. I want to invite them to come up, if you would, pastors who, who are here with us. Uh, please come join us, and I want you to just put your hands on these elders to be, who are elders now, who are elders when God calls us. Any, any other leaders from around the world in the Baptist Church, come join us. Come join us here up front, if you would. Any other ordained elders in the congregation, if you would come join us. Ordained elders. <laughs> now, if if you would just step out a little bit so that they can get around you. And I will, I will put my man Now, elders, pastors, if you would just come, come join them. Now, let's just, just press in together. If you can put a hand on them, please do so. 
If you can't put a hand on these elders here, put a hand on one another as we offer them to the Lord. Merciful Father, we are not worthy to kneel and bow in your presence. But we ask you as we kneel and as we lay hands and as we touch and agree, if there's any sin in any of us, Lord, if there's any sin in me, God, take it away. Forgive me. Um, make, make me a fit instrument for thy peace. And for any of us who, who are bowed here today in your presence, if there are any sins that we harbor in our hearts, if there's any, any unrighteousness that we cling to, Lord, we know we're unrighteous. We, we're not saying we're perfect. But if there's anything that we cling to that prevents us from being accepted in this prayer today, uh, Lord, cleanse us, forgive us, help us, please. And as we offer these to you in, in dedication and in ordination as we set them aside and apart for your service. I pray first of all, Lord, that you would heal them of any sickness and diseases. Sometimes we look in the mirror each morning, Lord, and we don't even know we're sick. We are. I pray that you would cleanse them and heal them of any ailments or any, any viruses or any tumors, any cancers, anything. Lord, whatever they need to be made whole from, do that for us today. And I pray for their families, Lord, their, 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 their wives and their children, Lord, just do something special for them. Put a, put a, put a hedge of protection around them. Bless their homes, Lord. Let, let angels of, of glory and angels of mercy guard them and protect them. Uh, put food on their tables, Lord, and and keep them as they travel up and down dangerous highways. Even before this day came, Lord, we, 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 we didn't know what you did because you ordained them as you did Jeremiah. You ordained them from the womb for this day. So bless them. Make, make them spiritual leaders. Make them, make them the kind of people that you want them to be. Make them to be examples, not, not, not stuff, not, not uh, arrogant, not above others, but know the humility of their own hearts and that it is nothing in them that caused you to bring them and call them, but it is your will and your will alone. So bless them, Lord, as we lay hands on and as we anoint them today in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Use them to your name, God, and glory for the finished work we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Sometimes I get counsel that I don't want to take. And it comes from uh, a person that I share a bed with. And um, sometimes elders, the Lord speaks to me through my wife. And this is not just for the elders, this is for all you men. Listen to your wives. Uh, they have they have 
have some wisdom and some skill and some they, they call it intuition. I don't, I don't know if I like that word, but that they sense some things that are happening that we don't we don't see. Because we're so busy trying to be men of God that we, we think we're immune from things. Just just let me tap that on. Just listen. Pray with, encourage, love your wives, and when God gives them counsel that you need to hear, take it as well. Now, I've done three things. I can check those off. Uh, let, me, let, let, me, let me just take a, a few minutes and share thought with you today, and then we'll be done. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you today for this beautiful Sabbath day. It's, it's been a blessing with the music and prayer and with the, the ministry to the children and with the, the organization and, and ordination and, and now just a few words from the sacred pages of scripture. And then this group will fellowship together and spend time, something we haven't been able to do for, for many, many days, many weeks. So continue to bless us throughout this Sabbath and I pray even now for my travels back, my flight back to Atlanta uh, for safety right pilot, the right equipment, uh, the right weather conditions, and uh, I pray that these other appointments tomorrow and the rest of this week uh, will be to your name, Father, and glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up this week as I was praying in my mind, I was thinking uh, I have an appointment up in uh, Columbia Union in Maryland. Uh, you may or may not have heard the name Lucy Byers, B Y A R S, uh, who was denied uh, medical service at one of our institutions back years ago. Um, re read up on her, just Google that and see what comes up. But our church, the Seventh day Adventist Church, denied her health care because she was a person of color. The Columbia Union. Right there where the world headquarters is and North American Division is, is trying to undo some of that. So they're having a special uh, recognition this coming Friday that I'm going to be a part of just, just to be there. Uh, to, to recognize the, the, the era of our ways back, back during the time of darkness, but um, that her family and others will know that. Uh, that was an injustice that was done by our church that they're trying to write. So I uh, pray for that too. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This, this is my favorite time of year. It is. I, I love, I love December. I, I don't like the cold. I don't, I never did like cold weather. And it's a beautiful day. It, it might break a record here today. I don't know. It's close. But I, I don't particularly like winter for the cold. I don't like the, the, the short days and the long, long nights. I don't, I don't necessarily like the, the, the naked trees and all the leaves are gone and look so but I love this time of year because it is Christmas. I like the lights. I like the, I like the decorations. I like the music, especially the music. I love Christmas music. I, I, I love the food. Yes. I love to eat this whole month. And, and maybe this year we can get together with family. We, we haven't done that in a, in a while, but we can all be around the table and break bread together safely in fellowship. When, when you talk about Christmas to Adventists, you, you can start a big fight. You know that. <laughs> you, it's, it, you have to hide all the knives in the, in the silver tray because Adventists get ugly when it starts talking about Christmas. Some of y'all in here today. How come they got them bowls on them pews? How come? Jesus said, wait a minute, who made, who made me a judge over all y'all? 
It is not for anybody in this room here today or anybody online, anybody to make a decision about Christmas for anybody but themselves. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Did I need to say that again? Yeah. The Adventist Church has no pro prohibiting of Christmas celebrations. It is my favorite time of the year and and I don't get into arguments and fights with Adventists about whether you should put up a Christmas tree or whether you can buy gifts or, or that. We, we know who Santa Claus is, don't we? <laughs> we do. We do. And just in case he still comes to your house, I won't tell to the children right now, but, but we know who Santa Claus is. We, we know whose birthday was December 25th. We know that. That's, that's, that's Nimrod historically. Nimrod, the, the great hunter, the, the great grandson of Noah, the Cushite, a, 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 a people of color. Amen. The Cushite. Read back on it. A mighty man, a, a hunter. Jesus was more than likely born in the fall of the year, Septemberish. Some, somewhere around the, the, the Feast of Tabernacles. Harvest time. When, when, when the census was taken, when the people had, had, had gathered in and in some cases sold their crops and gathered money and they could pay their taxes, they didn't do that in the, in the dead of winter. So, so we, we know that Jesus was, was probably born in the fall, even though God did not think it enough to give us something else to fight about. So it's not even there in the scripture. We don't, we don't really know. But we do know that the shepherds were out in the field and, 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 and there was a time of year where they brought the sheep in and they fed them from the reserves. Was, there was no grazing land. Um, so we, we, we know that, but regardless of all of that that we know intellectually, there are still some traditions that we as, as members of society follow. Traditions. From, from a Greek word, paradosis, it, mean, it means to give over, to, 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 to hand down, to, to pass on. Traditions are things that we have established in our lives, in our churches, that, that, that we just do sometimes without rhyme or reason. As of today, you are officially recognized as a body within the Seventh-day Adventist Church worldwide. We are not governed by traditions. We are not governed by what, what we do at the Winston household. We are governed by the Bible. We, we, we point to the Bible. We have fundamental beliefs. We have policies. We have a church manual. We are not, as Peter said, governed by cunningly devised fables. There is a structure. There is an order. There, there is a, a, a governing body. We are a representative church. We have leaders. We just ordain and lay our hands on elders. We have deacons, we, we, have, we have Sabbath school leaders, we have all kinds of people, a church that was established and set in place, not by Peter as the Pope, but as a representative body of believers. You are now officially a, a repository of truth. Amen. 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 Now you know Adventists, we have we have we have our traditions. We have our potlucks. Please enjoy potluck. Eat, eat my meal too, because I'm gonna I'm ride off into the sunset. Potlucks is a traditional Adventist thing. Other churches do, but I don't know if they call them potlucks. We are some potlucking people. We, we are some haystacking people. I said, what's a haystack? 
Or you put some beans and you put some chips and you put some, some lettuce and tomato and some salsa and some and some sour cream and some onions and all, and you just pile it all up in a big <laughs> We call them haystack. Those Adventist traditions. We have picnics, we have socials. Everybody else has parties and stuff. We have socials. <laughs> and we have to be careful that we don't make it appear that it's a party because it is a social. We have federations, we have camp meetings, we, we, we have Christmas concerts, traditions within the Seventh-day Adventist Church. But your main purpose for being here is to share the doctrines of the faith and the, the teachings of the Bible and to let people know that Jesus is soon to come. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. Let, 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 let me see if I still have any battery on my phone. I want to read something to you if I can do that. Very quickly and then I'll sit down. From Council to the Church which is a compilation of the writings of L.G. White um, page 202 about educating our children and, and our members. It is so easy to drift into worldly plans, methods, and customs and to have no more thought of the time in which we live or of the great work to be accomplished that had the people in Noah's day. Just mention Noah, Nimrod, his great grandson. The servant of the Lord, right? It is so easy to drift into worldly plans, methods, and customs that have no more thought of the time in which we live or of the great work to be accomplished than had the people in Noah's day. There is a constant danger that our educators will travel over the same ground as did the Jews, conforming to customs, practices, and traditions which God had not given with tenacity and firmness, some cling to old habits and a love of various studies which are not essential, which are not which are not essential, as if their salvation depended upon these things. In doing this, they turn away from the special work of God and give to the students a deficient and long education. Thank you for asking. I'm a vegetarian. Some days I'm a vegan. I, I am, I believe in vegetarianism with all of my heart. I believe that some of the illnesses and diseases that we have come from eating flesh. And sugar. Did I say sugar? And sugar. But I eat sugar. I don't eat flesh. I haven't had any flesh cross my lips and 40 plus years. I grew up Adventist. We grew up eating clean meats. I'm not, I'm not beating anybody down if you do. Make sure it's clean. Make sure it's kosher. Make sure it's good. We used to have lamb in my house. My, my parents' house. Once a year. We ate lamb at Easter. Biblical. Easter. We ate chicken and we ate beef. I grew up a Seventh-day Adventist from birth, but did not come a vegetarian until I was grown and married with children of my own. I believe in it. I believe you can eat yourself to death. But if you had some real turkey on your table Thanksgiving Day, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. And many of you did. Many of you had real drumsticks and real giblet gravy and, and real everything else. I, I'm not going to fall out with you about vegetarianism. I'm not. I wish, I wish you would be one. But I'm not going to lose my salvation over some chicken and some cheese. 
But Elder Ward, Elder E.C. Ward used to say, don't call me to pray for you, you sick, you got all these chicken bones all around your table and stuff like that. Don't even call me. <laughs> I believe with all of my heart that the vegetarian diet is the way to go. Amen. And I think we should eat as little processed foods as we possibly can. Amen. And I believe that everything that we need to heal us, God put in the ground and on the trees. Amen. We should eat what grows in the garden and not what walks through the garden. <laughs> so now, that, that, but, but that's a, again, that's a tradition. Vegetarianism is not a fundamental belief of this church. It is not. Go down through the 28. It's not there. I believe that we should pray three times a day, four times a day, five times a day. I believe that we should get on our knees where possible and cry out to the Lord. But if you can't. <laughs> And, and, and we come to church on Sabbath and people start falling out in the floor and laying on their faces. That's not required. <laughs> I believe, I believe that we ought to pour our souls to the Lord and be holy in his presence. But there are some things that are traditions that have nothing to do with salvation. So what, what I'm asking you today I am asking you to, to stick to the teachings of the Word of God. Don't, don't, don't set traditions above the teachings of the Word of God. Amen. Even when it comes to the spirit of prophecy, just read it. Ella White herself says, she is the lesser light. I got, I got all the books, the red books, the brown books, the blue books, that, that, that this church has put out. I got them all. I believe them. I just quoted from one. And most times I preach, I quote from the spirit of prophecy. But you have to be able to draw a line between thus saith the Lord Amen. and thus saith the servant of the Lord. Amen. Even those of us who stand at this sacred desk, you have to make sure that we have done our due diligence to break the bread of life and preach the word of God. I, I want you to study your Sabbath school lessons. I want you to read from the spirit's prophets. I want you to read from the word of God, but make sure you know that Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, everybody else. Amen. 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 Do not get caught up in traditions. Do not impose upon people things that, that have nothing. What did it say? Have nothing to do with salvation? It didn't quite say it that way, but it, I'll read it again because I want to know what it says. I want to quote it. There, there. Which she says, not essential. Make this company soon to be a church. Make, make it about the word of God. Make it about thus saith the Lord. Make, make it about loving your brothers and your sisters. Like, look, looking for common ground and not, not differences. For, 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 for being, for setting an example for our children. I know, I'm going to stop. I know of many, many people, our children, our grandchildren who will not step foot in an Adventist church today because of how their families were treated. I know some, some young people, young women in particular, who don't want to be a part of the Seventh-day Adventist church because some righteous person hit on them when they were in the church. For those of you who don't know what hit on means, I don't know how to tell you. Made, it, made advances to them. This, this is God's remnant church. We all are not perfect. 
we are we are by the grace of God saved by His grace and His Amen. mercy. Amen. But don't don't make the church. This is what I came to say. Don't make the church a stumbling block for people. Amen. 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 And I, I'm going I'm going to confess a weakness of mine. I have had to struggle. I think I've been struggling. I don't know, but. I have had to struggle with people with alternate lifestyles. Because when I grew up 20 miles from here, 70 years ago, um, we were not taught to respect all people. We, 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 we were, we were stomped on and put down and mistreated by people of another color and another race. Mm -hmm. We as black people. But I didn't think about the people that I looked down on. And, and some of those were people who I thought did not deserve the love of God. This is hard. This is hard. And I still know what the Bible says about, about homosexuals and, and other, others who have. I know what the Bible says. But I can't read anywhere in the Bible that the, the Bible says for me to hate them. Amen. Amen. Or deny them admission through those doors. Amen. It's been hard for me. And for some of you, if some of you have children and grandchildren who practice a, an alternate lifestyle, and all they want from you is acceptance and love. They don't, they don't want you to change them. They don't want you to decide whether or not their leaves are written in the lamp. They just want you, mom, now to accept them as human beings. Some of y'all might need to join me in prayer on that. Officially, officially from the Adventist Church, we do not accept or condone their lifestyles or their practice. They are welcome through those doors. They are welcome in here. You don't make them the first elder. You don't, you don't put them necessarily in leaderships when they come in here, but you say you are welcome Amen. in this place. Amen. You have to be the church in these last days who, who practices that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying, I'm saying we represent Jesus Christ and the and if God loves all of his children, I believe he does. And he is the ultimate judge. So, so I'm, 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 I'm getting off. I'm just wandering. I'm just rambling now. But there are things that you as a church have to deal with that I didn't have to deal with when I came in this church. Didn't, didn't have to deal with it. Didn't, didn't have to deal with with. Children on our grounds and our facilities being molested. Got a huge case we're dealing with now in Atlanta. Involving church members. A church member that, that is accused of molesting a child. By the way, by the way, child molesters are welcome in our church too. Y'all get mighty quiet. <laughs> now, now, if it's a convicted child molester, they're on the, the list. When he goes to the bathroom, you go with him. <laughs> or her. Let me, let me fix this. Or her. You do not give them free access to your church, but they are welcome into the church of God. Yeah. I had trouble with all of that, even as a preacher. 
But I do know this. I do know this, that there are people who, who call me all kinds of N-words and all of that all of my life when I live right around here and who have mistreated me. I knew some that came down the streets with their guns. You know, you think people marching with guns or something new? I've seen them on their pickup truck riding through my neighborhood with their rifles and shotguns threatening. That's not new. But I don't know if I'm going to make it in the kingdom by hating people who hated me. You are that church. You've got to start some new traditions. You've got to learn to love people who are unlovable. You've got to reach out to people who, who you don't want to sit beside in church. And people that you look down your nose upon. And we have to decide that God is the ultimate judge. We uphold the standards of the church. Did I say a while ago we had standards? We had problems. You don't just allow anything in church. We have standards, we have, and we and we will uphold those standards. But we will love those that we have trouble loving. And, and, and I think then, I think then when we get to a point where we can love people who are naturally unlovable, then I think we can finish the work that the Lord will come. Amen. Did I, did I get a, a, a nasty feeling in my stomach watching these two trials on TV, Rittenhouse and, and uh, Aubrey down in Savannah, Georgia? I mean, Brunswick, Georgia? Did I get a sickness in my stomach when the jury came back not guilty for, for somebody with an assault rifle shooting people in the street? That was sickening to me. Are there things in this world that, that I detest? Absolutely. But I'm a child of God. I'm not just a child. I'm a, I'm a minister of the gospel. And if there are people that I don't want the Lord to save, then Lord help me. Because you know, you know, I'll say this. Did I say I was going to stop? I said that 10 minutes ago, didn't I? We shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Everything that's wrong with us, everything that's wrong with you and with me, God's going to fix before we enter those pearly gates. And he and he alone will decide who is fit for the kingdom. Amen. Your job, my brother, my sister, your job is to present Jesus Christ in a loving and kind way as a forgiving Savior who will welcome them into the kingdom. Amen. Do that, and the work will be finished. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just pushed my notes aside and started talking stuff I wanted to talk about. I pray it was for you. But we are your remnant church. We have to show the world and be an example. Even though we do not like it, even though we do not, dis we do not agree with it, even though sometimes it, it's beyond what we have the tolerance for. But help us. Help us to love your children. Help us to minister to your children. Help us to pray for your children. And help us to be an example to all people of what it means to be a child of God. Bless this new fellowship, Lord. Keep them together. Keep them on one accord. Keep them full of love. And preserve and save them until you come in the kingdom, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen.
want to say once again? Amen. Let me hear a big amen. Amen? Amen. Are you happy? Yes. Yes, thank you so much, Elder, for that powerful message. Uh, those who are here, as we, are, we, have, we have heard what the, the messages Elder has brought to us from the Lord. And now, Elder, I want to say thank you so much. And thank you for so much. That's a very timely message. You know, the traditions that we follow, we blindly without knowing. You know, I saw people were listening carefully. They were thinking that the elder is supporting Christmas. But you were, you were wrong if you were thinking that. And we were talking about traditions which are followed and the people are following with blindly without following, without knowing what they are doing. But we thank God that we, we are together as a church. We follow some tradition which sometimes are not biblical, we have to really uphold the Bible, the Word of God. The Word of God is to be above everything. Let us interpret well, live by it, because God is always with us. So thank you, Elder, and we appreciate you so much for what you do. Thank you for accepting to come. They want to push us to go to the next year, but the Elder, they, because they love us so much, they say that they have to make it this year. So that next year, by December, they will come again to organize us as a church, full fledged church. And we want to thank God. By the way, because South Atlantic Conference has no really some traditions to make things very difficult for us as, as we plant churches around the area. You can imagine, to be a church, you need only to be 35 members. To be a church, regular members, faithful members, 35. And then your tithe must be 35,000. I want to tell you, Pastor Enoch, Pastor Enoch can tell you, Carolina Conference to be a church, it's about, you have to have like $200,000. $200, when are you going to be a church? $200, and you have to be membership must be 75, right? something like that. So we want to thank God for South Atlantic Conference. Is there for people, and I just want to thank the leadership because when coronavirus came around, they said to close the churches because they value people so much. We were living on Zoom for a long time, and because our elder here values people, because we can come to church and then lose our members. But they said, hold on, let's see what's going on. So thank you so much. And when time came, when the Lord spoke to him, he said, now we're going to open the churches. Because when God has said, has spoken to our leaders, we listen. So thank you so much, Elder. Uh, I want us to lead, to sing the last song. And the Elder is going to pray for us. And I promise that the three triplets, just who turned six years old, I don't want to forget Anna, Eliana, and Joanna. If they, they can also, Elder will pray for them. And also my son, Obed, turned 12 years old. So Elder is going to recruit them as he will pray for us. I think if they can make their way and sit here so that the elder is going to pray for them. I don't want to forget. Aliana, all the triplets come over here. Those who don't know, those are the elder Samson Yongoro, those from Kenya. Those are the triplets. We want them to be prayed for. They just turned six years old, and my son just turned 12 years old. The other one, so let them sit here when the elder is going after the song. When he's going to do the benediction, he will remember you in his prayer. Thank you so much. Thank you, sit there. Okay, now, Polista, come on. So our closing hymn, we're not going to use the one on the screen. It's going to be holy two, um, number 229, all hail the power of Jesus' name.
bunch of people who were praying for these children. He said when he was born in December and in you know, December, November, my wife, father said we need to listen to our wives. I just uh, mentioned that uh, we have to, if you are there and you want to, you were born in December, we can, we can pray for you as well. So if they are there, they forget it, then they can maybe they can walk your father's coming. Yeah, so can we be singing a happy birthday for them? Those those who were born in December, November, so that they can pray, be prayed for, they can come for one year. Happy birthday to you. As the, the announcement was made, three, three thirty. As always, a Bible study. Four o'clock. Huh? Four o'clock. I'm reminded. Bible study. We had uh, Michael. Those who knows, we are reminding you that uh, I just want to join. You can get the book and uh, then you can join that four, four o'clock. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you. And uh, now you can please pray as you just remember these ones here. Let's pray. Father, you said, except we become as little children, that we won't be able to enter the kingdom of God. And that's not just um, not taking responsibility for things, but it's the, the, the childlike trust of putting everything in your hands like we do. A father or a mother who cares for us. So we pray for uh, these three and this one young man. Do something special for him. When the disciples were trying to rebuke you for, for spending time with the children and, and calling them, you said, no, 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 no. Suffer the little children. Allow them to come unto me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of God. Lord, we can't be around them 24-7. We can't be around them every hour of every day. We can't protect them from every bad person or mean person. We can't protect them from somebody coming in their school shooting. We just can't do that, Lord. Um, our own school, they indicated this week, was on lockdown because there was a, an active shooter in the neighborhood that ended up taking his own life. We, we can't protect them all the time. But we ask for special angels to be with the Lord, to, to watch over them, to, to spread their wings of protection around them. And we as parents, Lord, help us to teach them, to set examples for them, to, to change some of the ways we used to do things, and to listen to them, and to, and to love them, Lord. So put, put a special blessing of anointing upon these four young people that stand before us today. And let your spirit teach and prepare them for a life of service, for a life of, of gratitude, for a life of thus saith the Lord. Amen. And bless their parents, Lord. Parents need employment, their parents need resources to keep them in church school and to and to feed them and to clothe them. Bless their parents as well. <coughs> and then, Lord, I pray. It may take a while, 
while we're standing on that sea of glass. But when we, when we finally start looking around heaven and see who's there and who's not there, after we see you, Lord, and after we thank you and fall at your feet, throw our crowns at your feet, Lord, after we have given honor and glory to you and praise your name, and we start looking around for each other, for loved ones that we buried years ago, our mothers and our fathers and, and, and those that we birthed in a family with, Lord. After we start looking around for those, we want to see each other. We'll be looking for each other. And, and you, you said, we'll, we'll know even as we are known. So I pray that these young people and all of those young people in this church especially will be in that blood washed number to stand on that sea of glass to sing the song of Moses and of the Lamb and that we can be with each other throughout eternity. It's my prayer today. Dismiss us in this place, but not from each other, Lord, and bless the fellowship, bless the meal. Thank you for the hands that prepared it in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs>